Hello again, everyone. This is Mark Oswald alongside Bill Bowman, CPA and president of Aegis Financial. Just want to give you a little update on what we're seeing in the economy and the stock markets and certainly what our investment committee is looking at right now in terms of the S&P 500 and the other markets that support investors. You look at the S&P 500 right now and it's just getting to be a number that is really impressive. That's right. At 4,200, we're up again, uh, even from the last time we did these videos. And uh, it continues to move forward. And we don't think it's done. For sure. And, you know, you think about where the market was, let's say, in January of 2020, before we even had a pandemic, right? And mm -hmm. you were at about 2,200 on the S&P 500, now at 4,200. Yeah. And that doesn't take into consideration one other thing, which is dividends. A lot of times investors look at it from point to point and say, we did X percentage in the markets over the last period of time. But it discounts the dividends. And that's an important part of investing. That's right. It also helps us where they're fixed income investors since the, the dividends provide an income stream for them. I think a lot of people have that question in their head of since the COVID, the markets, the economy, the market's been really good, mm -hmm. but the economy's kind of been bad. I mean, people haven't been working. And you think of this whole, you know, the shutdown and, the, and companies that have just had to lay mm -hmm. people off. Why is the market up when the economy's kind of been a little rocky? Well, the market tends to be forward looking and they anticipate this continuing with the additional money that's being poured into individuals' hands, what else do they have to do with it? Um, and they, the market is where the return is coming from. And you see that in consumer spending. When you look at the numbers, GDP is a function of you know a lot of consumer spending, and the GDP number for the first quarter was 6.4%, up 6.4%. So mm -hmm. you think about that, and the consumer spending being up 11%, it's supportive of the, of the notion that people are out spending money, and that is supportive of companies and economies. Sure, and we don't think that's going to end uh, what most people saved money last year and didn't get out and do much. So we think the money that they've saved, almost $2 trillion, will be put back into play, and it could come into play this summer and into the fall. The other thing that we saw this week, of course, was President Biden, a speech on mm -hmm. Wednesday night, laying out a very aggressive you know, tax and spend kind of a, an approach, but sure. a lot of money at hand. We're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars, not only in terms of infrastructure, and I start thinking about sector rotation a little bit in our investment committee when you start thinking about infrastructure. Yeah, and we want to take advantage of those areas where we think it's going to be affected uh, for some of the items that are in the proposals and moving some of our assets into those investment categories that will do better. For instance, basic materials. You think about Correct. building bridges and steel mm -hmm. and, and lumber and all those things sure. that go into those projects. Basic materials might be a sector that we consider in our investment committees. Yes. There's only one way to pay for it, though. When you start talking about $4 trillion, $6 trillion, there's only one way to pay for it, and that, of course, is... Taxes. Yeah. yeah, and so you start thinking about what that might mean from a corporate standpoint, and that gets to profitability of any corporation is how much you're paying in taxes, sure. and also personal rates, especially on the top end for, for mm -hmm. the wealthiest investors. Well, we do think that is a, a headwind for the market, but we don't think this will stop the market from growing. We anticipate still growth with the amount of money that's being pumped into the market through this year and into next year. I start thinking about smart investors, though, and people that have worked with a financial planner a lot of tax efficient planning that can be done right now right. in people, people's portfolios in anticipation of what might come in terms of changes in the tax law. Well, and this is where our expertise lies. You know, we, we currently uh, look at opportunities for clients all the time for uh, reducing their tax or positioning their assets to reduce their tax in the future. When you think about the other things that happened this week, the Federal Open Market Committee Chairman Powell gave a speech after they met, and it was supportive of the idea that the stock market could continue to be supported by monetary policy from the Fed mm -hmm. in a couple of different ways. We think they're going to be accommodative in 2021 and throughout 2022, making money very cheap, and that will enhance the market going forward. Well, I'll give you an example, for instance. You know, you got the federal government out there and their, their, their monetary policy includes some bond buying. Mm -hmm. So you've got the Fed and the Treasury working together to handle the supply and demand side of fixed income. That keeps the price of those bonds up and keeps interest rates low. You can still get a 30-year mortgage in this country for under 3%. And that's supportive of home builders and people that want to go out. And there's an ancillary trickle-down effect of other economies as well. Yeah, everything that uh, you do when you buy a home, getting new drapes and new furniture and, and new appliances, all will be affected by that. You also had a good jobs number. 
first time initial claims down again, so people are getting back to work, they are spending, and then again, that has an impact on our investment committee. Just turn your attention a little bit, Bill, towards earnings season, some pretty good numbers. Yeah, so we continue to see the S&P 500 companies outperforming their guidance, and again, the, uh, their guidance is relatively conservative, so we think that's going to continue on for the time being. Well, we get to the part of spring where you start to see some better weather, but there's also still time to look at your taxes before the tax deadline comes on May 17th. If you're interested in doing that, please give us a call at the office. We'd be happy to see you. Thanks again for your time.